Good morning everyone and welcome to the Dane and Trent YouTube service. It's hard to believe we're already into the month of June and our services during the next few weeks will focus on the book of Ruth as we join in with Bible Month along with many other churches and fellowships around the country. We're pleased this morning to be able to welcome Mrs Ruth Pickles, one of our local preachers, who will speak to us later. Last week we celebrated the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and today in the church year is marked as Trinity Sunday when we remember the three persons of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father God, holy three in one, we join with the saints on earth and in heaven as we bring our worship to you. Come and meet us now by your Holy Spirit and gather our dispersed voices into one single church of praise. In Jesus' name, Amen. We come before God with our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. Mighty God, beyond all space and time, greater than our minds can grasp, ruler over all that is, has been and shall be, we worship you. Loving Father, kind and merciful, full of goodness and compassion, constantly watching over us and directing our steps. We praise you. Saviour Christ, flesh of our flesh, yet the living image of God, sharing our humanity, yet one with the Father, loving to the point of death, yet bringer of life, we acknowledge you. Holy Spirit, free and mysterious, source of guidance and inspiration, filling our hearts and mind, we welcome you. Mighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, with awe, joy and thanksgiving we celebrate all you mean to us and everything you have done in our lives. To you be glory and honour, this day and every day. Amen. A prayer of confession. Lord, as we recognise your greatness, your goodness and mercy, we realise in our human frailty that we fall short of what you expect of us. Our thoughts, words and deeds are not always in accordance with what you'd want from us. 
Forgive us, Lord, for all that is wrong in our lives. Lord, we come to you with humble hearts and seek forgiveness. Through Jesus' dying on the cross and his rising again, we thank you for that assurance of sins forgiven. Thanks be to God. The Lord's Prayer Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be looking at the Old Testament Book of Ruth over the coming weeks as part of Bible Month an initiative which wants to help people engage in a deeper way with scripture by focusing on one particular book of the Bible. Bible Month can be part of services, small group discussion. It's for people of all ages. This year perhaps is a little more challenging in terms of groups, but Zoom or discussion over the phone with a friend offer possibilities. There is a booklet of background explanation and notes to accompany our walk through the Book of Ruth. Details of where this can be downloaded will be given at the end of the service. Ruth is one of the shorter books of the Old Testament and is found between Judges and Samuel. There are several themes which can be drawn from the book of Ruth and there have been many scholarly interpretations, not least from the perspective of women. Ruth is a Moabite, Moab a place which was not in a cordial relationship with Judah. Historically, Moabites were seen as an unclean people. The story is concerned with Ruth's survival as a foreigner. It demonstrates God's faithfulness to a Moabite who travels to Israel. The account focuses on relationships, other themes of redemption, loving kindness, danger, journeying through a wilderness, poverty, uncertain future and vulnerability can also be seen. So we look forward to seeing how God will speak to us in the coming weeks through the book of Ruth. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Ruth, reading from verse 1 of chapter 1. Naomi and Ruth In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a man from Bethlehem in Judah together with his wife and two sons, went to live in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilian. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem, Judah. And they went to Moab and lived there. Now Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women, one named Orpah and the other Ruth. After they had lived there about ten years, both Marlon and Killian died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. When she heard in Moab that the Lord had come to the aid of his people by providing food for them, Naomi and her daughters-in-law prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road which would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We will go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home, my daughters. Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? 
Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. And even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters, it is more bitter for me than for you, because the Lord's hand has gone out against me. At this they wept again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Luke said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. When Naomi realised that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. The whole town was stirred because of them, and the women exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth, the Moabite woman, her daughter-in-law. Arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Give me your 
What's the story? is the theme for the President and Vice President of the Methodist Conference this year. And today we begin to look at the story of Ruth. And her story links with my story. When Ruth Rain was eight years old, she was given her very own King James Bible. You might think that's quite hard reading for an eight-year-old, but never fear, it had 30 full-page colour illustrations and one, only one, illustrated a story about a woman, my namesake, Ruth. I was so thrilled. Once upon a time, there was a man with two sons. Quite a few biblical stories start in similar manner. In this story, the characters are named and the names have meaning. The man, Elimelech, my God is king, also had a wife, Naomi, pleasant. Their sons are named Marlon and Chilion. Both their names sadly associated with sickness or destruction. They lived in Bethlehem, which means house of bread. Only there was no bread the crops had failed and there was famine. So the family took a big risk to travel through the dangerous wilderness and cross the River Jordan to the country of Moab, a place despised by the Israelites, but there was food. Then Elimelech died and the sons married two local women, Orpah and Ruth. Their names are associated with water and the giving of life. But after a time, the sons also died. We're only up to verse five, and now there isn't a man with two sons, only three widows. Life is uncertain for Naomi as a widow. She needs community support, and she's in the wrong community. She decides to return to her home in Bethlehem where she has relatives whose duty it will be to support her. Naomi's duty is to provide husbands for her daughters-in-law. The custom would be for brothers of the dead men to marry the widows. Naomi is too old to bear more sons, so she pleads with the younger women to return to their own mother's homes. It's no use them going with her to Bethlehem because they as Moabites, would not be considered suitable wives for Israelites. Orpah is persuaded. Her loyalty to her own mother is greater than to her mother-in-law. But Ruth thinks differently. We hear her saying some of the most beautiful words in the Old Testament. I quote some of them from my childhood King James Bible. Ruth says to Naomi, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God shall be my God. And so they journey across the Jordan through the dangerous wilderness to arrive in Bethlehem, Naomi's home. But strangely, the people's question to her is not, how are you, but who are you? For Naomi has changed. She left Bethlehem with a husband and two sons and has returned only with a foreigner as daughter-in-law. Now, she says, my name is Mara, bitter. I went away full and returned empty. Then the last verse of chapter one sets the scene for the next phase of the story. The harvest is about to begin. We'll hear about that next week. I think there's so much in this ancient story that resonates with our current situation. It tells of loss, loss of food, family, security and identity 
and Naomi makes a journey through all these situations. And when she ends up where she started, Bethlehem, she finds that what she thought would be the same is different because she herself has been changed by her experience. And Ruth has made a journey that means she must leave her home, Moab, where she understands the language and the customs, to live in a place where she, as a foreigner, will be in danger of discrimination and even physical violence. But she makes it because she has come to love Naomi and has learnt to trust in the God in whom Naomi trusts. Though Naomi has some bitter words about God. Our journeys these past three months have been difficult. Some of us have lost loved ones who have died. We've all travelled through the wilderness of isolation, having to deny ourselves the joy and comfort of contact with family, friends and our local congregation. We may have felt a loss of identity for who are we if we cannot relate to others in meaningful ways? Those who have been required to go to work have experienced the potential danger of exposure to the virus, which we have learnt can cause serious illness and death, and the fear of taking it home to family. Many of us have lost what we thought was the security of the familiar, and some sharing worship online today will have struggled to find food for their family and others may have lost their jobs with fearful consequences. But across society we've also experienced the loving kindness of the stranger, neighbours who've gone out of their way to look after the vulnerable key workers in the community who've worked cheerfully despite their own loss of security and the impatience of others. And the unfailing loyalty to their calling of countless health and social care workers whose wilderness experiences have taken a great toll on their well-being and tragically for many their lives. As church, we've lost our buildings and the joy of worshipping together and chatting over coffee. We don't know when we'll be able to do that again. And when we do return, will we recognise ourselves? We may think we're coming back to where we started, but we will be different and we'll need to act differently. We will need to ask ourselves, who are we? And how do we live in this strange land? We need to seek God's guidance for the way forward. We cannot see it clearly yet. But importantly, we have, in this wilderness time, reached out to countless people who are not churchgoers, but are interested in, or at least curious about, what we believe and we must continue to walk with them when we arrive at the new normal and our buildings are filled again with worship. So much for part one of the story of Ruth. It is, as they say, to be continued. Loving God, at this time of change in our society, we know that you are an ever constant present in our world. As we study the book of Ruth, we will find similarities to our world today. The grieving of Naomi and Ruth as an immigrant in a strange land. We pray for all who are grieving the loss of loved ones Place your loving arms around them and let them know your peace. 
We pray for all fleeing from oppression, those deprived of fresh water, clothing, housing, education or medical care. Reach out to them, Lord, and keep them safe. We pray for our government faced with difficult decisions. Help them to choose the best path for the safety and well-being of our nation. We pray for our church. The buildings stand empty, but the life of the church remains strong. Help us, Lord, to adjust to our new ways of worship, to reflect on what we are doing and what we can do in your service. Grant wisdom and insight so that obstacles may be overcome and bring us together in genuine love and understanding. We pray for the people who have worked for the welfare of others in all walks of life. Bless them, Lord, as they serve you by serving their neighbours. We pray for ourselves. We come as unique individuals from various backgrounds. Take what we are and fashion us into your people, working for your kingdom. We ask these prayers in your name. Amen.
you for joining us in worship. If you'd like more information about Bible Month and the supporting reading material, you can go to the following website, preachweb.org slash Bible Month. So we close our worship in prayer. Let us pray. God, the Holy Trinity, make us strong in faith and love. Defend us on every side and guide us in truth and peace. And the blessing of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen.